name is Dr. Rick Sigill. I'm and action. Hey, uh, Jay had a... This is Kirk to them. And action. Hey, everyone. Ryan had a question. Oh, it's Dr. Rick. Ryan had a question on fish oil. So fish oil, uh, for our topic of the day, is essentially omega-3 oil. Fish oil, omega-3 oil, is made up of DHA, docosahexaenoic acid, and EPA, icosapentaenoic acid. And I'm not going to say that again because I always get them interchanged. But DHA and EPA, those are the two basic ingredients in omega-3 that comes from fish. That's probably the easiest way to get your oils if you're uh, not a practicing vegetarian or vegan. Uh, but if you are a plant-based warrior like myself, um, I would try to find as much as I can in uh, either flaxseed, ALA, or um, the yeast-based DHA. And I'll show you in a second what I take. But if this is the first time you're finding me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and the alert button to find out when I do new videos. So, uh, yeah, just for full disclosure, I have been a uh, practicing plant-based warrior since uh, fall of 2000, uh, 2018. I don't know why I'm looking at my watch. Uh, so uh, uh, my friend Bob had a heart attack uh, as it was evolving right in my office. I decided I'm gonna go plant-based for you, dude. So I have. Bob, good job what you're doing. Uh, maintain this thing. Uh, it, you're not done. There's always evol evolution here. So. I say the farther you are from your last heart attack, the closer you are to your next one. So please uh, stay, on the, stay on the road to health. Anyway, um, so when I was a pescatarian, that's a vegetarian that eats mostly whole food plant-based diets and fish. Uh, this was my favorite, mackerel. I used to get this in Jewel Osco all the time. This is awesome stuff. So you have to worry about the BPAs in the can but uh, hopefully some of these products will show you BPA-free, but this was one of my favorite. Um, uh, so if you're gonna take the small non-predatorial fish, predatorial fish are, are big fish. Salmon technically can be a big fish, uh, but tuna is a huge fish, and that's uh, salt water, salmon's fresh water, and uh, these guys are tiny. Mackerel, herring, anchovies, sardines, these are tiny. They also stink. That's why I used to have to eat this outside. And I always have to brush my teeth. I feel sorry for some of my patients that came at like one o'clock after my lunch. Sometimes I wouldn't have a chance to brush my teeth. Sorry, sweetheart, my wife's a dentist, but I wouldn't have a chance to brush my teeth and my breath would smell like fish. I, I, uh, I don't know what my patients were thinking, but now I, am, uh, I don't eat fish anymore, but I do need the omega-3s. And that's why I take in Flaxseed oil, bingo. Uh, so I use uh, Now Foods brand, but I don't think you have to worry too much about the flaxseed oil. Uh, that's the size of the capsule. I should do an unboxing of this. And that is the label. So it says three grams of flaxseed oil. So three grams of flaxseed oil is about a teaspoon of flaxseed oil. And it's about, um, if you're thinking about DHA, it's about 100 uh, grams of DHA. So the, the problem with uh, D DHA being at uh, 100 uh, milligrams, milligrams, I'm sorry, milligrams is that it's not that much, right? But if you take ALA, um, so uh, alpha linolenic acid is ALA, it comes from flaxseed oil. And uh, if you take ALA, which is a plant-based form of omega-3 oil, and you eat it, your body can convert it to DHA, uh, actually first EPA, and then it converts it to DHA. So uh, this uh, flaxseed contains an 18 carbon chain oil, fatty acid, and it changes it over to a, I'm just gonna show you by example, a 22 carbon fatty acid. This happens to be a vegetarian DHA. Now, uh, those of you who are asking, well, why do you have to take DHA? And I'll explain it in a second. But this is really cool. I might as well just show you the, I'm going to do a spoiler now. This is my DHA. It comes from Allergy, and it has, as the label says, 500 milligrams. That is robust. So why do we need both ALA and DHA? I'll tell you why. Well, so this is not that much, this does not convert to that much if I'm able to convert it, because not all people can convert ALA to EPA and DHA, 
there's a chain of events that happens. If you take the ALA, it converts eventually through a chain, series of reactions by the body. If you don't have too much uh, omega-6 oil, it converts to EPA. And then the EPA, which is really good for heart protection, really good for joints and pain, and really good for skin. Uh, EPA is very important. But if you take enough, you'll be able to convert and make your own EPA. And then when you make the EPA, eventually that filters down to the next enzymatic process to DHA, which is the endpoint. And that's where this is cool. The thing is, why do I take this? Is because EPA is good for, uh, oh, I shouldn't say EPA. ALA that converts to EPA is good for heart and joint and skin. DHA is good for brain and eyes, especially for your kid. So that's cool. And the cool thing about having DHA and the precursor for EPA around is that if you don't get enough, because some of us don't convert this over to EPA, you can actually retroconvert. If you take DHA, it'll go backwards. So I said ALA can convert to EPA, EPA converts to DHA. Well, if you take a lot, there are some studies uh, on NIH's website or the Linus Pauling Institute that say if you take enough DHA, it'll retroconvert upwards to EPA and other things. So that's really cool. So that's the problem with being a vegetarian vegan is that when you don't have the option of aiding an animal, this is uh, my old uh, fish oil. I did a video, and I'll put the link down below, where I talked about Carlson brand uh, omega-3 oil. And Carlson's pretty good. It's loaded. It's got per capsule a thousand milligrams of total omega-3. That is cool. It comes out to about um, uh, uh, 1,500 of EPA and 500 of DHA. That, that's pretty good. Now this has, this is not Carlson, so, but, but I get this online. I found this when I used to be eating fish. You can see the label here. It's about 500, I believe, of DHA, or 480 of DHA, and about 1,300 of EPA. So this Viva is pretty decent. Now, the, the, that's per capsule, right? So the problem is per capsule, you have to be careful. Oh, I'm sorry, it's for, for two capsules. So you have to have two capsules. If you take two capsules in, then you've got 2,000 of uh, total omega-3, and that filters down or breaks down into uh, about 13 to 1,400 of EPA and about 480 to 500 of DHA. So it's pretty complete. So if you take two capsules a day, that's pretty decent. If you have a cholesterol issue or a problem with the brain, I take four capsules a day, two in the morning, two at night because I don't think the gut can take and absorb more than 2,000 at a time. So you'd have to split it up. And usually everybody forgets the evening one. So, uh, by the way, keep this in the freezer because fish oil has a notorious problem of smelling if you just ate fish. Like my one o'clock patients will notice in my breath. I, I brush my teeth, I try to brush my teeth, but sometimes I don't have time. So, um, uh, if you want to avoid the fishy burp, uh, then you freeze it, and if you freeze it, uh, by the time it's thawed past the pyloric sphincter in the stomach, you can't burp it up anymore. You can fart it out, but you can't burp it up. And I mean, if it goes out the attic and doesn't go out the basement, then I guess that's pretty good. Wait, sorry, I want it to go out the basement, not out the attic, because you'll breath, smell the breath. Anyway, um, uh, so the idea is uh, just for being complete, this is cheap, you can get it on Amazon. Uh, freeze it and it'll stop the burping thing. You might fart more, but it really stops indigestion when you freeze it. And yes, the capsule will look opaque. You pop it in, swallow it quick. Uh, you're supposed to take it with food. Uh, fatty uh, oil is supposed to be taken with food. Uh, I couldn't because I fast in the morning, so I took it and I'm doing okay anyway. My cholesterols are solid. Uh, my cholesterol levels, total cholesterol, and LDL cholesterols are solid. Usually most vegetarians are, but I would still take this anyway because of the effect of EPA on heart and joint and skin and DHA on brain and eye. See, so you're kind of getting the gist of this thing. And so if you have heart disease, if you have high cholesterol, if you have a arthritis problem, if you have a psoriatic arthritis or eczema issue, take it for the EPA. If you have a problem with brain or a stroke or concussion, then I'd suggest taking the DHA. So this is all in one, pretty good. There's about 20, 20 to 30 bucks, I think, but this is a huge bottle. Most of you would just take two a day and be fine with it. Um, so if you uh, can't do that and you don't take um, uh, animal products, then I would do a combination of your own flax and this. 
So the, here, here's the breakdown too. When you take all this stuff in, ALA, or alpha-linolenic acid, that's what flaxidol breaks down to is alpha-linolenic acid. When you take it, it's supposed to break it down, and this is equal to, this is about three grams of flax oil. That's equal to about a teaspoon of flax oil, which is equal to about 100 milligrams of DHA and more or less 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams of EPA, and that's not enough. Uh, but uh, there's a cool thing with this that when you take the ALA, it has your source from plants, if you're a plant-based person, it converts in the body to EPA through enzymatic conversion. That means it goes from an 18 carbon fatty acid to a 20 carbon fatty acid, and then eventually it gets to a DHA, which is a 22 carbon fatty acid. And the 20 and the 22s are the ones that really benefit 20s for heart, joint, skin, 22s for brain and eye. So. Uh, the cool thing with, so, so that's why I must take this, because it's, ALA is considered an essential fatty acid. You can't make it on your own, and it's the basic building block for everything you're supposed to make. So the more you take, the more EPA and DHA your body will be able to make. But the cool thing is when you take DHA in the form of yeast, this is yeast-based, I mean this 500 milligram dose, where is it? There it is. 500 milligram dose in yeast, uh, two capsules of this, and these capsules aren't that big, is equal to, if you can compare the size, uh, the amount, is equal to, if not more than, the two capsules from the fish oil. So the yeast outdid the fish. So I get, I believe, 500 here, I get 480 here. Two capsules each. So, as I was alluding to, if I don't take enough ALA to go into EPA to eventually end up with DHA, I can take the DHA from here, which will go backwards. It has the ability to go backwards. So, I mean, it has the ability to take care of my eyes straight away, but it also takes the chain and go backwards, or it retro produces from DHA EPA, which is a cool study that was at a Lenny's Polling Institute. So if you have the, the, the end point, you can actually make EPA. If you have the uh, beginning point, you can actually make EPA DHA. So, so it's nice to have both of these. This is a little pricey, but I think it's important, especially during winter season when seasonal affective disorder is around. I would really burst into this stuff. Now, if you're pushing the envelope like me, or you have fibromyalgia like me, uh, then you will try to always take this. Uh, and yeah, it's, um, that's pricey. If you can't take the the the, the supplements, that, uh, then you go with the uh, true whole food. But the whole food has its drawbacks too. You have to take calories. So in addition to this thing having a thousand, remember you're supposed to have two thousand a day, that means you have to have two cans a day. Uh, you also have calories that go with that you have calories that go with that uh, protein, fat, and carbohydrate. Well, not too many carbs, but so you have to eat those calories. And if you're trying to lose weight, or maintain good brain, eye, heart, joint, and skin. Uh, you're going to have extra added stuff that you're on the account for, so you'll have to exercise extra grow, extra more. So uh, the thing with that conversion list, that my imaginary chain of events, is that if you have the right amount of omega-3 fatty acids, it will convert once you eat it. The, the basic building block that you don't have in your body that you need is an essential fatty acid. But if you're taking in too much omega-6s, uh, then the same pathway that takes care of uh, converting omega-3 down the line. If there's way too many omega-6s, the omega-6s will go down the same uh, chain of events and they'll knock out uh, or take up the enzymes and the omega-6s will go down and get processed. They won't get processed to EPA or DHA, they get processed to other things. So when you have too many omega-6s, not enough omega-3s, your omega-6s will take over and that is pro-inflammatory. Uh, when you have enough omega-3s to balance the omega-6s, this is anti-inflammatory. So those of you with heart disease, arthritis, eczema, problems with con uh, cognitive function, difficulty with eyes, you got to get that amount of omega-3 in. And omega-3 will balance the world, make the world a better place. Maybe less global warming, who knows. But if you have global warming, no more fish available. And you won't be able to grow plants and the whole world will die. And we'll probably have heart attacks, joint pain, skin problems brain farts, 
and can't see. So we're gonna be walking around farting uh, on our knees going like this uh, and having a heart attack while we're on the ground. So that's why it's important to have, uh, so um, Ryan, that's why it's important to have omega-3s, especially when we have anxiety or depression, especially in winter of Chicago when the sun goes away and the mood goes downhill, really have to crank this stuff up. So do I spend a lot of money on supplements? You're damn right I do because I have the opportunity and not everybody has the opportunity, but I am working my way to Everest by 2022 slash 23. I've decided to postpone it to 2023 because I'm going to have to move my son into college. So I think by the time I'm an empty nester, I'll be tackling base camp at Everest. So the only way to do that is to do massive amounts of hiking, hit elevations, which I just did in uh, uh, Colorado. I have to post the video to that. But uh, to do that, it hurts. Your knees hurt, your heart gets challenged, your eyes and your brain get challenged, and that's why it's important to balance all this stuff out. So when we have mood issues, when we have cholesterol issues, when we have arthritis issues or knee pain, that's why it's important to have all this crap around. If you can't afford this, understood. But then you're going to have to take as much omega-3 oil as possible, whether it's to drink flaxseed oil, drink olive oil. And, and by the way, when you, you can take oil in uh, via your cooking style or drizzling on salad, but uh, I asked somebody today to translate for her mom, and I asked mom, okay, you're doing great, your cholesterol is a little high, so what are you using to cook oil, uh, what kind of oil cooking oil are you using? She said vegetable oil. That's the nastiest type of oil. It's a lot of omega-6s in that. So you want to be cooking with, so if you're looking to cook with a low smoke point, like, like popcorn, like the pop, my own popcorn, or something like your uh, uh, roasting vegetables, um, uh, you, you can use olive oil. Um, extra virgin olive oil would be great. It's got a low smoke point though, so if you turn up the heat and you're cooking high or trying to burn something or, or cook something, high heat, you're going to have a lot of smoke in your kitchen, so you might have to have a different form. Vegetable oil does have a high smoke point, but it's got crap in it, so if I was to cook, I would rather have you use organic canola, sometimes called rapeseed oil, or, or grapeseed oil, uh, or uh, avocado oil, which has one of the highest smoke points. Coconut oil is pretty good too, I don't know about the flavor of that afterward. Walnut oil is pretty good, I can't find it that often. Uh, so those are the ones I cook at when I'm going to be cooking at high heat. Uh, but olive oil uh, conventionally is, and I think olive oil smells better, but olive oil uh, is fine for all the low, uh, low heat cooking uh, dishes that you're trying to put together. And that will be another way to get uh, fatty acid into your body, omega-3. But if you can't cook with that, then you have to try to get as much fish as possible. One of these cans is equal to about a thousand. You need two cans a day. Now if you take whole fish, again about a thousand. So you're going to have to have at least a six to seven ounce salmon filet at least every day or twice a day. That's, that's not affordable. You can't, I can't do that. And I don't expect you guys to. And then your whole house will smell like fish, like my breath after lunch. I try to brush my teeth, but sometimes I don't get to the bathroom. So I feel really sorry for my one o'clock or two o'clock patients, but you know, get to me in the morning. Maybe I'll smell better. Uh, anyway, if, if, so if you also, if you, can, if you don't like fish, you can get it in your oil that you use. You can probably get it in your meat that you eat, but you have to balance that out. Try to get a little avocado in there. Try to get some walnuts in there. Um, and, and hopefully uh, you'll get a balanced serving or two. Sometimes if you talk to a registered dietitian or a nutritionist, they'll be able to help guide you as far as moving around your macronutrients, your plates. It's very important to be able to uh, uh, just go through the aisles of the store and know what you're going to pick in, in, as far as ingredients and be able to put a mishmash together, get in your shopping cart, go out and have a healthy uh, life. Now, now everything I put together to eat, I always say you have to be able to use your fuel sources to prepare for the exercise you're going to be doing in the next day or two. Uh, if you think of it that way, you'll always try to stay on the straight and narrow. If you have the inkling for a jelly donut, because everybody else, or a Snickers bar in the morning, because everybody else in the office has it, but yet you think, wait, I have a big lift tomorrow, I have a big run in two days, you know you're not going to do it. Those of you who are in school and you practice uh, track and field, baseball, basketball, wrestling, wrestlers especially, man, if you're going to be pushing the envelope, or powerlifters, uh, jiu-jitsu artists, I had a, uh, a jiu-jitsu practitioner today, 
He remembers you're not going to, if coach is going to put you into the finals on Friday or Saturday and you're eating crap on Monday, you're not going to be able to perform like the other guy. The other guy is, whoever's going to win is always going to be the best, the best rested, the best fed, and the most cardio endurance guy, and it's the best technique. So technique, endurance, training, that's all good, but if you kind of uh, fail on the nutrition and the sleep, eh, you're going to lose. So you always have to think ahead of time. Uh, one way to uh, beat the crave that everybody's going to be putting around you, because we have people dropping off donuts all the time because we live next to uh, Dunkin' Donuts, but I, I blow by that because I know it's going to screw up my workout. So always think, everything you eat in this next 24-hour period is going to be paying you back for the next two to four days. I mean, one to two days of exercise. So know what you're going to do with exercise and pay it forward. The rest that you do today will be paying you back for the exercise you just did yesterday. So you're always going to be thinking about uh, exercise yesterday, paying it back with good rest and rehabilitation today, eating now to pay it forward for the exercise you're going to be doing. So that's how I would play it out. So you're always going to have a project. If you have no project, you'll be tempted. You'll be tired, you'll be tempted, and you'll go and dive into your craves. So you have to fight that because we are surrounded by an industry that is funded to make their uh, industries prosperous off of our health. Now, that's why food tastes so good in fast food, but it's so crappy. I still have, those of you who come to my office, I still have that McDonald's steak, egg, and cheese bagel from 2011. It's in the front. Uh, it's still one piece. The cheese is there. The steak is there. The bagel is totally there. I don't know what happened to the, um, the hash brown. It was there. Oh, hopefully nobody ate it, but... Um, that's not, that's not real. I mean, that's totally fake. It's been alive for, what, um, uh, um, eight years. So who knows what's in that, but I would really avoid that. That is not what you have to eat to perform well in the next one to two days of exercise. So uh, stay on straight and narrow. Hopefully this gives you a little idea about uh, what you're supposed to be doing with regards to omega-3, it, whether it's animal or plant-based. Uh, give you a couple of varieties. Uh, if you can't take or afford the oils, then Start picking and choosing your, your food sources and get that build up so that you can live till 90. So if you have any comments on what you take, put them down below. Even if you just take in fish oil and uh, there's a Barleen's as a, the pourable one. I, cod liver oil, ooh, I can't take that. You can also say cod liver uh, because if the fish isn't fatty enough, you can take the oil out of its liver and take it as an omega-3, but that's nasty. I remember having to drink oil in a spoon a long time ago, and that would, I don't like the feel of it. So uh, maybe some of you do. But if you have anything, put your comments down below. Otherwise, thank you for listening up until this point. Ryan, hopefully this answers a lot of your questions. I'll put the links down below. Check them out. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next Minute Clinic.